Well everyone, it's a very special day. We get to finally talk about another Mac Mini, which is so beautiful. I love Mac Minis. I think they're probably one of the better Macs you can buy from a value per dollar standpoint. But I will tell you in this specific case, we are going to compare it against the previous generation Mac Mini, which I think was probably one of the better deals as well. But this M2 Mac Mini is definitely a solid upgrade. However, if you currently own the original M1 Mac Mini, there is no reason to upgrade at all. I would recommend you to keep your M1 Mac Mini for as long as possible. But if you do have the ability of going up, go up to the M2 Mac Mini. If you have all the money, you might as well go for the Mac Studio. But if you want to pick up a Mac Mini, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now starting off with the outside of this specific Mac, there actually really isn't too much going on that's different different from this one from the previous generation. The, internally there's been some changes for sure, but on the exterior there's not really too much. I think they're exactly the same color, they have exactly the same exact ports as well, which is not a bad thing, and you still have a lot of capability with this specific Mac, which is beautiful. Now funny enough, if you do go up to the M2 Pro Mac Mini, then things start changing. So this is the bigger thing to keep in mind. If you're comparing an M2 Mac Mini to an M1 Mac Mini, pretty much the same exact port situation. But if you go up to an M2 Mac Pro, if you go up to the M2 Mac Mini M2 Pro model, you are getting you know four Thunderbolt 4 ports on that one, an HDMI port, and USB-A ports, so two of them. On the M2 you know, Mac Mini, you are getting two Thunderbolt 4 ports, an HDMI port, and then two USB-A ports in the headphone jack. So when you compare those two models, there are definitely some differences, and definitely the you know M2 Pro option is better than the M1 Mac Mini. On the front though, they pretty much have the exact same setup. There's not really too many differences here. Kind of the same exact thing. I will tell you from the color standpoint, it looks like the M1 Mac Mini was a little bit darker gray, or the M2 Mac Mini is a little lighter gray. I don't even know if there's a difference from the Apple's website, that's kind of what it looks like. The M1 Mac Mini, the bottoms look pretty much almost identically the same as well. But like I mentioned, the port situation, depending on which specific Mac Mini you get, can have different set of ports inside of them. But theoretically speaking, if you're comparing the base models, not really too many differences as far as I can tell. On the sides, there's not much going on either. So you still have a pretty good looking machine. I mean, both the M2 Mac Mini and the M1 Mac Mini are very, very solid machines. Now in the box, like I've, been, <laughs> I've mentioned for long periods of time now, there's not too many differences here either. You're pretty much getting the same exact accessories. Apple kind of makes you buy a lot of the accessories that you normally would want. Things like, you know, a screen and things like that, but that's totally okay. It's not really that big of a deal here either. So definitely keep that in mind. Now, one thing that I do want to note between these two models, which is a very big deal, is monitor support. A lot of people tend to forget, and in my case, it happens all the time too, you kind of tend to forget that the M1 devices, a lot of them can only support one monitor out. In this case, if you have an M1 Mac Mini, you can support, I guess, for one display up to 6K and one display up to 4K. So you have a little bit more flexibility. But on the M2 Mac Mini side, you can support up to two displays. Or you can support three displays if you have the M2 Pro model. So if you're somebody who likes working with multiple monitors, that route is the better way to go, going to the M2 Mac Mini side. Personally for me, I prefer using, you know, multiple monitors. In fact, I have a whole separate machine next to my iMac that I use the, you know, free mode where it's like you can go from one monitor to the other, I forget the name of it. And I love that mode a lot, but having a dedicated separate monitor is always preferred. And that is definitely the route I would recommend going down. So if you want the, you know, more monitors to kind of choose from, the M2 or the M2 Pro model is probably the better way to go. Now internally, there are some other ways you can spec out. So with the original M1 Mac Mini, you kind of got one configuration, but you could spec out the storage and you could spec out, you know, the amount of memory your computer has too. With the M2 and the M2 Pro Mac Minis, you have a lot more you can spec out. So you can still spec out the storage and you can spec out the memory, but you can also upgrade your GPU and the CPU as well. Before with the M1 Mac Mini, one configuration, now you have the ability of kind of upgrading there, which I think honestly is also a really nice touch. And again, whenever we have the ability of doing that, that is always the best thing. And this honestly allows you to kind of, you know, have a machine that's a little bit more future-proofed. You know, I doubt in the future, the base Macs, or at least the base Mac Minis, are going to be 12-core CPU and 19-core GPU with 32 gigs of RAM. Well, you can already spec out a Mac like that with the M2 Mac Mini, or at least the M2 Pro model. 
with the standard M1 Mac Mini, it only went up to 8-core CPU and 8-core GPU. And I say only, but that is a lot of horsepower to run, you know, depending on what you're doing. Now, I will also add, with the M2 Mac Mini, the M2 Pro, you can spec it out to 32 gigabytes of RAM and 8 terabytes of storage. On the previous M1 Mac Mini, you could spec it up to 16 gigs of RAM and up to 2 terabytes of storage. So now you have the option of going up four times the amount of storage or twice the amount of memory. Those are some big numbers here. You know, if you're going from one machine to the other, those are some pretty decent numbers. But it really just depends on what you're going to be doing with your Mac. Me personally, my M1 MacBook Pro, which was pretty much the same power as, you know, standard M1 Mac Mini, those machines were beautiful. They had so much power within them, and I loved using those Macs. I still think to this day, these are very, very good Macs, and depending on your usage, you're going to have a perfect time with them. To kind of break down my, you know, experience of using the M1 chipset, it was wonderful. I was coming from two different Macs. I was coming from a 2015 MacBook Pro and a 5K iMac from 2015. And I loved that iMac because it was beautiful, it was fast, it was kind of glitching up every once in a while. But then when I upgraded to an M1 MacBook Pro, which was the same specs as this M1 Mac Mini, it was a very good experience. It let me ditch both my, you know, MacBook and my iMac to only just using one MacBook, and I loved it. I docked it up to a monitor, and that was it. And this chipset is still very solid. You could do everything you'd ever want for the most part, but if you noticed that there were some other stipulations with the M1 chipsets, like the monitor support or only one monitor thereof and some other things like that, and those were kind of the more issues I had with that original M1 chipset. With this specific case, the power I never complained about. It was more than enough powerful, and I loved it. And now that the M chipset has kind of been out for a little bit of time, a lot more applications have came out, a lot more games and software have been optimized for this specific chipset, and my favorite, a lot more emulators have been supported on this chipset as well. So now that's why I think with the M2 chipset and the upgrade there, since there's been a lot more improvement, I've kind of had a lot different of an approach when it comes down to the support of these specific, you know, chipsets as well. And with the M2 and M2 Pro, you know, chipsets, those just bring so much more power. But if you weren't even maxing out the M1 chipset, there's no reason to go and upgrade to the M2 model unless you want more monitor support or whatever. Personally, for me, I think the M2, you know, Mac Minis are very good, especially for that price tag. $599 for that base model. It's very, very good. And it's very enticing to just kind of have one of these things laying around. I see a bunch of companies buying these Macs as well because they're very, very cheap, but they're very powerful. And I will definitely tell you, you cannot go wrong with the Mac Mini. But just keep in mind, you will have to go and, you know, buy a separate monitor, any other accessories and dongles, you have to buy those as well. But because the M2 Max, I think these are only the only Max right now that have an M2 chip with USB Type A ports. That is a very good, you know, Mac for sure in my opinion. So when it comes down to it, I will definitely say with an M1 Mac Mini, you can't really go wrong with it. But the M2 Mac Mini is more powerful. You have a little bit more specking out capability, so you can, you know, get more, you know, ports. So you can get more power from that type of Mac, which is honestly very cool. And like I said, I honestly don't think you can go wrong with the, you know, M1 Mac Mini. But the M2 Mac Mini is definitely, you know, more powerful. You're getting more memory if you can spec it out that high. And I don't think you can go wrong with that either. But if you currently own an M1 Mac Mini, I would just recommend keeping it. There's not really too much of a reason to go and upgrade. But if you don't have either one of these, if you don't want to buy a used M1 Mac Mini, because you can't really buy them brand new anymore, you might as well go with the M2 route. And I don't think, I mean, I think that is a very solid choice as well. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.